Welcome to the Musical Architects Podcast. Today I got my twin, B Music, in the house. What up, what up, what up, world? Yeah. All right, so before we get started, B Music, I want to tell you that I'm proud of you. Out of all the artists that I've worked with all these years, everyone always talked a lot about doing this and doing that, but you're the only one so far that has actually done what they said that we're going to do. So I want to big you up. Shit, appreciate it. So you know, I'm proud of you. Thank you, thank you. Shit, right, man, same here, way. I want to thank you for actually, you know, I mean, you've been with me, you and my boy JP, man, and shout out to my boy Dren too. Shit, I've been seeing up, y'all Drent? doing y'all thing for JP. a long time, and every chance I get, I always got to put y'all, I got to big y'all up, man, you know, because I learned with y'all, and y'all show me whatever, everything y'all know, y'all, y'all teach me, and um, whether it be beats, recording, everything, you know, I had my first session with Jay, you know, and I mean, I remember that shit like it was yesterday. So, man, and um, him kind of showing me things and teaching me, like, hey, you know, we'll uh, do this take or, or, like, you know, redo it and just kind of learning from him, you know what I mean? And now we're here, you know, like, we got our own little thing going. Um, we got our own following and... Um, yes, sir. And we're just making it grow, dog, you know? So, shit, I really wanted to say thank you, too, way, you know what I mean? Like, um, I've learned a lot from y'all, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, it wouldn't be right if I'd never, you know, if I don't, if I don't, if I don't, you know, give you your... Your flowers, you know what I'm saying? Shit, I appreciate it. Hey, but that's how it's supposed to be. Whenever you learn something, you're supposed to want to share with the people around you. That way, eventually, they could get to a point where they could do something with what they're trying to do, you know? Yeah, hell yeah, man. Before we get started, though, you want to talk about that first little session you ever had, like, recording music? Like, how it was with JP and, like, what you had to do when you didn't know nothing about making music? Man, it was just me and him. I really just showed up to hang out, you know, to chill. We used to live right down the street from each other. And um, I just showed up to, to hang out, and nobody was there at the time. It was just me and him. And um, I, I don't, I don't, uh, I think we was, I guess we were just hanging out and, and, you know, talking music and shit. And I showed up there, I think, already with like a song written over that Bone Thugs Body Rock beat. And uh, man, I just wanted to give it a shot. And he was like, shit, let's do it. You know, it was just me and him. And it was a good thing it was just me and him because I probably would have been like more nervous and yeah. shy and shit. Yeah, especially and, that uh, first studio session. You start yeah. to get nervous. Like, even if it's just you and one person, you start to think like, am I going to sound good? Or what if I fuck up? You know, like any little thing is like on your mind. Hell yeah. Because, you know, I don't want to embarrass, embarrass myself, you know? So I'm like, man, fuck it, you know? But shit I, I, I was started doing it and i wasn't so good at keeping i knew how everything was supposed to sound in my head you know but early on i didn't know how to breathe between you know rapping and recording and you know like what where to pause and how to like write my lyrics to to where i can like like I, okay well right here i'm able to take a breath and, yeah you know a little yeah. shit like that you but know that's and, a learning process you know like over time the more you do it you start to realize when you're recording like okay i need to take a breath here so i could do the next part or even when you're writing your rhymes you know you have to write it a certain way or else it can mess you up when you go into yeah into yeah the board. yeah and it, and it was really just that um i'm pretty sure we took a while dog you know what i mean but jay was he was patient man you know he was our engineer yep that was and, the, uh, the infamous you know, engineer hell you know, yeah that time for southern block shit he was a mastermind with putting this shit together too you know and and man and he got forced to be the engineer yeah, he didn't even want to engineer uh, we at always, the time we always throw him in there to do everything you know for us and shit and man you know he just really picked it up dog and and man we finished doing the song and i was able to post it on myspace at the time and yeah, that's you know, when I myspace to... was big too yeah, yeah do you remember your verse to that body rap beat from bone thugs i don't remember the verse i remember the title it was at the time i was on some crazy like like wicked warrior soldier shit. you know at the time all this shit was going on so it was just it was named uh, soldiers and warriors and I was on the Bone Thug trip, you know, where at the Art of War, they were wearing camouflage. Yeah, and, and that's what we were wearing shit. all the time. We yeah. were all rocking camouflage. Yeah, yeah, so I was just on that on that kind of trip and shit, you know. And um, but but uh, I kept that pad for a long time, though. And I, I recently, from moving around too much, I uh, lost that pad. But I, I Damn, kept that, that shit for for a long, long time. I want to say that I still have a good amount of lyrics from from that time dog yeah i know i, I got to some go too. look go digging but um i do have my first beat though shit i know my very hey, first beat i dog. still got the first beat i ever made very too and beat. sometimes like i'll go i'll listen to it 
and even oh, though man, like I don't even want to show this yeah shit. nah I'll show mine but at the same time it's like man I got so much better but yeah. it's just funny like it, it's badass though having that first thing you ever created because when you go back and listen to it it can I don't know about for you but for me it takes me back exactly where I was yeah, yeah. and what I was doing and how I was trying to learn you know to yeah, even yeah. make beats you know or yeah. even with recording music I still have one of the first songs me and my brother ever recorded and it's funny when I hear it because both of us had real light pitch voices at the time because we remember teenagers. hearing I think I remember you uh, showing me that and you know like the delivery was all right but it was more we, we used to freestyle all the time so when I listen to that shit it's like damn you know I had a good freestyle but my delivery wasn't all there because you could hear me be like <sighs> and then try to keep spitting you know like you would hear the the, the breath you know like trying to keep going yeah man it's crazy dog it's a trip but man the good thing about all that is that you're able to look back and be like, man, you really stuck with it. You know what yep. I mean? Whoever, yep. whoever stuck with it. I mean, you're able to like, I've heard interviews from like Timberland where it's like, man, I can't believe people like my whack beats and shit. Like he know, he didn't think his beats were all that, but I mean, look where he's at now. You know what I mean? He turned out to be one of the best producers. Yep. And, and that, that's what you know? it is though. Like over time, you know, like you get better cause you start to learn your own engineering. You start to learn about, you know, the volumes and making sure one sound doesn't overpower the other sound. You know, like you start to learn all these little things to where it makes you better. So where you, and while you're making the beats, you start to realize like, okay, I don't want the bass to overpower the rest of the sounds or yeah. I don't want the snare to be too loud. You know, you start to learn all these little things and that's also what helps you get better. Yeah, and all that just comes with time and, and you gotta sit there and really do it. You know what I mean? I'm pretty sure you had a lot of people, y'all had a lot of people, you and Jay like come up to y'all and tell y'all, man, I wanna learn or how do you produce or how do you do this and that. And some people stuck with it and some didn't. And man, I just remember clearly sitting there and watching you and Jay on the, on, in front of a uh, lot, uh, not logic, um, Fruity Loops. Yeah. And man, that was I what we used at the time. Sitting, sitting in front of the computer and just looking at this shit like, man, what the hell is this? You know what I mean? Like it <laughs> caught my attention just like the way the program looked. I'm like, man, this is some badass shit. Like I was amazed though, because I had never seen anybody owning any kind of equipment or any kind of setup, and I was just tripped out like keyboarding. And man, dog, I, I don't. I, it took a long time for me to tell Jay. I remember walking in the room and he had some turn, like the turntables with yeah. the mixer, with yeah, the biggie. Yeah, he still has them too. Dog, for a long, long time, I thought Jay like he could chop some shit up. And, like, <laughs> I thought he was like on some DJ shit for real. And I was just amazed, way you know, and and I was like, man, fuck, dog, like you know. I was like, man, I want to learn this right here, you know, and I, I would just ask y'all questions and and all kinds of shit about it, dog. And until I was like, you know what, I, I think I found a way to. I've never been computer savvy or anything, in any of that, you know, but I found a way to like download like a sample from the internet from FL. Yeah. And man, I wasn't able to save anything because it was only like a like a, a demo, trial, like a demo, yeah, the yeah, demo version. Demo. I remember that one. Yeah, I wasn't able to save anything, but I sat there days way yeah. entire saturdays and weekdays just trying to mess with it and learn it and i remember one of the one of the first questions to you was like man how am i able to make this 10 second little loop to a whole song <laughs> like man i didn't know i was like straight up from scratch dog zero i didn't know nothing like i still own i still have like some of my mm -hmm. some of the beats where i sampled i sampled shit from youtube and me learning how to you know chop and sample yeah. stuff and you know what i'm saying that, but, that's crazy though that you bring up uh fruity loops because i remember like all right, from the time you came around, Drin had just gave me that program like two years before that. But yeah. when he gave it to me, before that, we were using a program called EJ. And on that program, only thing you could make yourself was the drum patterns. Everything else was like, the sounds were already created, but you would have to mix the sounds to make your own beat with yeah. your own drum pattern. So when he gave us FL Studio, well, it was Fruity Loops at the time, but it would say FL. Yeah, yeah. But I remember, like, I didn't know shit. Like, even when I looked at it, I didn't know what the hell I was looking at. And he didn't know how to explain it either because he didn't make beats. Yeah. But he got the program for me, and it was a demo version. And I remember me and my brother, we spent every day from that point to, like, all the way. He gave it to us, like, I don't know. I want to say, like, the middle of the year. And uh, we were living in South Houston at the time. So when he gave it to us, I didn't really go nowhere because I'm a, all my boys and you know, homegirls, everyone lived in Pasadena and we're in South Houston. Yeah. So we spent every day making, well, trying to figure out the program. We finally figured it out. We started making beats, but they weren't really that good because we were barely learning the software. Yeah, yeah. But it's just crazy because we spent so much time on it to by the time you came around, which was like two, two years later, like maybe like a year and a half, almost two years later. But when you came around, we already had that shit down yeah, so good that yeah, no. it was like we've been using it forever, you know? Yeah. But I remember we went from the demo version and we I kept telling them, when I finally got it working, 
hey, it's not letting us save the beat. So whatever we make, we have to send it out right there because once we turn off that program, we can't save it and everything's gone. So he ended up finding the actual version and we didn't pay for it. He figured he was like a computer hack. Yeah, straight up. So he would find everything. everything. (laughs) He would get all the sounds for us. And every time he would come over, he'd have a new sound pack for me. But this was before sound packs. But I remember the main beat, the main sounds we were using was Lil John drum kids and 3-6 three, three, six Mafia, Mafia drum I remember kids. seeing all those kids. So like, all yeah. my beats, all my beats from like, I remember that shit. from like 2004 to 2006, and like a few years later, it was all using their their drum kids. Man, and that, y'all had a shitload of kids, dog. Because I remember when I started using it, I remember I, uh, there'll be times where I would ask JP, like, hey, wait, like, you know, where'd you get your kids from? And he would tell me, like, oh, we'll check out, like, a website of this or... I think even YouTube had a, like, there was a way for you to get them from YouTube or yeah, something. Yeah, it would have, like, it would almost be in the song format, but it would be each little, like, it would be, like, it would have the kick, yeah. and then a couple of seconds of quietness, then it'd be the snare, and, you know, and the same thing would follow. It would be all the sounds like that. Yeah, man, I was just, I was really trying to figure it out, dog. Like, man, I, I, got, I really got interested in that, and I remember at the time, man, dog, just to make a beat, I would sit there all day, all day trying to make a beat and trying to, learn it and see you know how i could flip it and learning the sample and i would take a whole day just for the computer to crash you know we didn't have the best computer yeah no i know that that was another thing you learned over time like i got to get a better computer our our computer crashed so many times to where i would be pissed off like i'd be in the middle of making a badass beat and we'd be jamming out and then the fucking computer would just crash yep for me it would be like whenever it was time to bounce it into and make it into an mp3 or whatever man it would just stop it would lock up and I knew, man, dog. <laughs> you already that knew, like, fuck, it's that time. For me. Yeah, and then there'll be times where, where the, because the, I wasn't the only person using the computer, you know, being like my sisters and everybody in the house used the computer. So there'll be times where, like, the damn thing will mess up, and then my dad, will, I will come home from school, and I'll be ready to use it, and my dad's like, my dad's sitting right in front of the computer, he's talking about, he had a reboot everything and, and erase everything that was in. I was like, I remember those days when you would tell me like, man, my dad had a fuck with you, you know, and he erased everything, everything. Everything's deleted. Everything is deleted, dog. And man, I just be like heartbroken, dog. So I, I wouldn't mess with anything for a long, for like a couple weeks. Like, yeah. man, hell nah, you know, I would get discouraged with that type of shit, but it's all good. We got better equipment now, dog. Yeah. We got our own shit. <laughs> now we got the top of the line shit. The, only the best shit. Yeah. Who is B Music? Uh, B music, uh, artist, producer, MC, songwriter, you know, all that. Um, write my own stuff, produce my own stuff, and um, and I'm into the MC and shit. You know, when it comes to rap, I try to I try I try to push my pen and and you know do it the best that I can. You know what I mean? And that's how you know we come from the old school. Even though we're still young, you know, that's how you know we come from the old school because we care about that pen game. Hell yeah. That wordsmith game. Hell yeah, you know, it being influenced by all the all the lyricists and um, the thing the, the thing that I found out about all, all the people that everybody looks up to, like the biggies and and um, you know, big pun, L, Nas, all these people were lyricists, they were MCs, yep. you know what I mean? So to me, that just let me know, hey, well, shit, you want to be great or you want to be good at, at this rap shit, you have to be an MC, you have to rap, and you got to really focus in, in the in the spitting part, you know what I mean? So, you know. Oh, yeah, and, and, and to me, it seems like around this time, like, it's starting to go back to where people care about what you say. It's no more getting away with just, you know, the, the vibe of the song sounding good. I feel like we're, like, getting back into that motion where people want to actually see if you could rap, like, you could really rap, you know, not just make a song sound good because you're, you know, you're doing little monotone stuff or, you know, you're like, you know, with the melodies and stuff, people want to actually see if you could rap, you know, and I feel like we're getting to that. So it's dope that you actually care about that because once it gets, I feel like we're going to get back to that point where people want to see people rap, you know, like, and they want to hear that shit. It seems like it's going back to that. So you're already like in that mode to where once it gets back to that and people catch on to you, they're going to be like, damn, this boy's been doing that shit for a long time already, you know? Yeah. And I think, I think, um, the MC part is one thing, but I think what made these guys like legendary people in the game was the fact that not only were they MC, were they MCs and rappers, but they were songwriters. Yeah. The fact that you could spit and talk that greasy shit in a song and still be able to make people have a good time and jam out and all that shit, 
that's what really made them yeah. huge, you know. So that's my mission to be able to be recognized as a as a uh, MC that writes songs, you know what yeah. I mean? Um, so hell yeah, way you know that's that's the thing that I, I try to focus not just not just necessarily on a uh, have a song that's just nothing but rapping and crazy and shit like that, but be able to put out songs, entire songs from beginning to end, whether I produce the whole beat or if I get a beat from you, or, you know, but be able to also write um, entire songs, where you know what I mean? Yeah. How much time would you say you've invested in yourself as a creative artist? Man, I, I want to say a pretty a pretty long time, man. Like, um, for a while, there was things that were kind of, that's had me like on and off, but I always, I always came back and, and landed on, on like, man, I got to get back in, into, into the producing and writing and all this shit. But, man, lately, I want to say a few years already, you know, to where I'm really sitting there and... and um, yeah, like being serious. Being serious you know, like, with it, you know, and, and producing my shit and, and writing and everything. It's been, it's been some time now, you know what I mean? Sometimes, sometimes I use it as like a, it's like a, a sport. Straight up, it's like a sport, dog. Yeah, yeah you know it I mean? is, yeah. <clears throat> so, for you to get better, you really got to sit there and do it. The only difference with, with rap and, with like, for example, basketball or football... Is the fact that nobody tells the rapper hey, you gotta go into the studio, you gotta you gotta practice, you know, write a write a verse or whatever, you know, you gotta push yourself and and, and sit there and really do it, you yep. know what I mean? You gotta make yourself get up every day and go to practice. You yeah, know, yeah, there's yeah, no you one know. telling you, hey, it's time to get up, you know, or you don't have no one, you know, rushing in telling you, hey, hurry up, you're about to be late. It's like you gotta get up and tell yourself, hey, today I gotta do this, I gotta do this, I gotta work. Since you're also a, you're a rapper and a producer, you gotta come up with the beat first. You know, or sometimes you might have the beat ready or sometimes you might even go through like, you know, someone else's beat and you're like, hey, I got to be in rapper mode now. You know, it's like you're, you're two different athletes, you know, like yeah. in that in that creative process. Yeah. Hell yeah. And a lot of times there'll be like entire weeks where it's just something about, man, I just want to make a beat. And I just then I spend like those couple of days making nothing but beats because I'm feeling it. I feel inspired. I feel like, you know, all this, you know, I just want to I just want to uh, make make a make a beat. And then there's weeks and days where I'm just like, man, I feel like writing, you know, I, I, and that's all I do is I sit there and I write. Dog, there's been times where I sat there and I, I wrote to, to the tick. Yeah. You know, I just let that shit play and I'm not, make, I haven't, I, I, don't, I don't sit there and make a beat, but I feel like writing, you know? Yeah. So I sit there and I listen to the, to the, to the tick, just go, and I'm just fucking writing, you know? But it's just, I find different ways for me to practice, you know? Yeah. So it don't get bored and I don't get uh, bored with it or just, you know, I just find different ways to kind of, you know, approach it so I can, you know, stay inspired writing. Yeah, see, you know? and, and that's what's up. Like, that's that's the first time I hear something like that, you know, like right into the tick of the beat. Like me, when I really want to step out of my normal element, I like to go to like old school hip hop beats and I'll play the shit out of them and I'll just freestyle. Like, I'll just rap whatever's in the room. I'll talk about that. I just go off into space with it, you know, and a lot of times I'll come up with a badass idea for a song or even the, the rhyme that I spit. I'm like, oh, that shit is badass. I'll go and get my phone and hit voice record and I'll respit that shit mm -hmm. and I'll end up using it on, I'll recreate a beat kind of with the same tempo, you know, and I'll like reconstruct something new with that idea. And man, that shit will come out so badass to where I'm like, hell yeah. Like I get a lot of motivation from like old school beats, but yeah, I'll transfer yeah, yeah. that motivation to my own beat that I'm that I create afterwards, you know? So like since you're talking about, you know, being creative and everything, what was it that you felt like inspired you to even want to create, actually create music? Man, straight up is is it's your way. You know what I'm saying? I, like I was a fan first, you know, and um I probably wrote something here and there, but just because I was that much of a fan of the music of, of rap, you know. And uh, but I mean, I never knew anybody that had their own their own equipment, their own their own microphone and stuff like that. So honestly, I didn't really think about anything like that till I met y'all. You know, when I seen y'all, y'all was already rapping and y'all had you know groups and you know, man, I was just really amazed by that. And so it just started to cross my mind little by little, and I was like, man, you know what? Well, let me try that. You know. And shit, like I said, I started. I had my first session with Jay. I learned. I learned a lot from Jay. And shit, to this day, you know, if there's any questions I have, I ask him. And and you know, you know, he always comes through for me. So you know, same thing with you. And when it comes to the writing part, I always admire Dren because man, when it came to a lot of the verses oh, on songs, man, you know, yep. Dren will kill that shit. Hell so, yeah. And, and one and of the, it, he always like even back then, like you know, people that didn't know about Dren before Southern Block, they didn't know like. Back before that, we were in a different rap group. 
And even at that time, he would come up with some of the craziest fucking rhymes to where like I would be like, yeah, the metaphor. All right, you know, yeah. like this is where I gotta step my shit up, you know, because yeah. at the time, all right, we had like you know different artists in there, but everyone had their own like th their own like type of rhymes that would make them stand out. Like one would be like real witty with like wordplay. One would be like more of like just good with the flow, you know. Like one person was real melodic, but Dream was like that that actual like wordsmith MC type of dude. Yeah, yeah. And it, he would get on like any beat. At the time we were rapping on like Southern style beats, like Lil John and all them, you know? Cause they had like, you know, the crunk shit and that's what we were on at the time. Yeah. But he would be on like some rap rap lyrics on those beats. Yeah. And everyone else from, from our time that went to school with us and everything that was dropping music, none of them were doing that shit. Mm -hmm. But me, like I was always on that freestyle rap shit, but when it would come to writing and I knew I was gonna be on a song with him, I knew like, all right, I gotta be ready. Like I gotta go in with my shit. So I would be real like, like creative, like thinking like, I'm gonna use this word and I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna say this, you know, like to where I knew like, but man, like to this day, Dren has a rhyme that's always been stuck in my head. And he said, I'll put your heart in a box like it's Valentine's Day. Straight so, up. Hey, and matter of yeah, fact, matter of fact. That's for Valentine's Day for, yeah, all, for all the fact, ladies out yeah, there. Straight up. We're in Valentine's weekend, so perfect. Perfect yep, right there, That's dog. a perfect match right there. <clears throat> straight up. And it, with him, dog, like um, in the last battle, like I was in, I was in uh, involved with a, like a rap battle contest, right? And I oh, remember, yeah, yeah. I remember at the end of one of those rounds and shit like that, or whenever it was all done, I remember calling up Dren like, hey man, how do I do? Cause he was like, he was on the live and he was commenting and showing love. And I called him up, like I straight up called him like, hey wait, how do I do? You know, like, like what you think? And it's like, to me, y'all's opinion has always mattered to me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, um, man, it was just like I said, y'all, y'all been the ones that was closest to me. So, and y'all were doing it and y'all were doing it well. So hell yeah, I got inspired by y'all, dog. You know, besides the fact that I was already a fan and you know, me liking the music and shit like that and little by little, I got into the recording and writing, and then after that, I wanted to pick up producing, so I started producing, making my own shit. So yeah, man, little by little, I just got into it more and more, you know. And and man, like I said, and it just keeps it keeps going, and I keep learning. I, I've learned shit all the time, dog, you know. But that comes with the with with time, and it comes with you actually wanting to sit there for hours and hours, and just in front of the monitors, in front of the keyboard and drum pads, and you know. Speaking of all that, like, you know, the whole process of making music, what's your creative process? Like, do you have a specific thing that you do to get yourself, like, to want to make music? Like, is there something like, you know, some people, they might smoke first, some people might drink first. Me, I play music, I go through all the music I grew up to that helped even make me, like, feel inspired to music. I'll play that shit and it'll just get me in the mood. Is there something yeah. like you, like, something that you do that might get you into the, to that type of vibe where you're like, man, I just want to go and fucking make music. Yeah. I, I do I do some of the same thing. I listen to a lot of music. I'll probably watch interviews or whatever. Um, I watch a lot of documentaries. So I'll go watch and I'll probably go and watch like a big pun. And after watching a big pun and documentary that I watched like a hundred times. I know already, I watch I watch that like, one Hell all yeah, the time. I gotta get too. back to work, you know, or something. But um it's it's the simplest stuff where like I it don't I don't think it takes a lot for me to get inspired, you know, like our conversation could inspire me, you know yeah. I mean? you know what? We were talking about work and we we're talking about music and we gotta step it up. That makes me want to go home and turn on the computer and yeah. you know, get back to work. So it's just stuff like that, you know. And and, and my approach to 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 wanting to do it is, is different. It is not always the same. Sometimes I listen to music. Sometimes I watch something. And I used to record fucking drunk all the time. I used to <laughs> always have a beer every time you like, hey, we'll come through. We having a session on a Friday. I would show up with a beer, you yep. know. There was rare recordings where I recorded sober, you know, and now I have to record sober, so you know I can't I can't use that anymore. So, so it was a little uh, transition. It was a little like different thing that I had to get uh, used to, but I mean, you know, it's all good. You know, I ain't tripping. Like I said, I, it, it doesn't take a lot for me to get inspired, you know. So out of all the songs that you recorded, what's your favorite song out of your whole music catalog? Uh, I have a few. Um, but my main one is, of course, uh, for my angel. Just because of how everything came about, the story, the video, everything, dog. Like everything, everything about that whole song, the story about it is is really. I feel like I, I think I've said it a few times where like I've always wondered how, for example, like these great artists came up with certain songs like that were like they're they're classics, you know. Like for example, what was Tupac thinking when he came up with Dear Mama or Shed So Many Tears or yeah. whenever, you know what I mean, stuff like that, and. That song is just, you know, 
it, that, that was the answer to my question you know yeah. it was just really something based on life and everything just came together little by little and it turned into i think you know i think it was, to me it's been one of the best songs that that um where i've gotten the most reactions from people you know where to this day you know they like it and they support that song you know yeah it just so keeps building up it keeps building up you know what i mean so i want to i will i will say that one right there you know because of everything yeah and that's like that's a song that's always like you know it, it's it, it's sad to say but it's something that people are always going to relate to because you know like we just had covid you know like these waves of covid happening these past you know two years what going on three yeah and so many people i know have had people that they love passed away you know or you know like friends like there's people that i went to school with that passed away from covid you know and that were like same age as me you know like healthy you know everything and just everyone got hit different so everyone has lost people so a song like that is something that that people are always going to relate to because everyone you know life you know like we all lose people we love it comes to a point where one day we're not going to be here yeah but you know our loved ones are going to play that song you know your family's going to play that song when they think about you and oh look you know like look at our boy you know like he made this song you know like yeah that you know that's one thing that i that i always loved about music like with you know rappers that have passed away that left music behind especially videos because you get to see them in that element you know performing in a video of a song that they made that they really liked you know and they're not here no more so you know like yeah. that song for my angel is going to always be something that people are going to relate to just because of the message you made in that song you know yeah yeah hell yeah do you remember like who was the first person to ever like believe in you when you started saying like i'm gonna do this music you know like this is this is what i love this is what i want to do man i remember in high school there was like a few people um like i remember when i put out that soldiers and warriors song one of my homegirls in, in one of my class I was like hey look my song is out already and this and that and i remember her telling me i took forever i didn't put nothing out after that for a long time so she, i remember her telling me all the time like man when are you gonna put something else out like i already learned that soldiers and warriors like from beginning to end you know like i need something new and it was just people like that you know like like yeah and that's a good and feeling like, that, like you, know? you know like people that I, I was tripped out you know i was like oh shit, all right well and that, get, that's the song that it. you said you felt like you know you're you weren't as good on oh, it dog like come on you know like at all I, I didn't think i didn't think nothing of it i just wanted to do it because i wanted to get into it you know but it wasn't it wasn't like oh hell yeah this is the one right here type of shit, you know but <clears throat> yeah i mean i had a few people dog you know like here and there um some i still like man i still keep in contact with her not like like on a daily basis type of thing but what i mean is like like i have her on social media yeah like that you know so they she still knows or they still know that i'm making music yeah you know? you're still active and they from the time to time they pop up and they show love and shit like that you know but yeah dog like you know and to them man i really want to say thank you you know um they've they've they seen me do it from from high school days and things like that and uh the re the fact that i'm still doing it just shows that how much love i have for it you know if yeah. not i probably would have left it when a long time ago you yep. know because you know it came it came probably to this day there's still everybody wants to be a rapper type shit but and i guess in our city at least everybody was rapping you know yep. a lot of people wanted to rap i and remember a lot of people stopped you know but we're still doing it you know and and shit i just i i didn't think i was gonna get the kind of recognition or be this far yeah so like damn now i'm conducting like now i'm conducting interviews and this and that like you know what i mean so it's it's, it's real cool dog you know what i mean and and i really want to say thank you to everybody that's been supporting me from from the jump you know yeah and like what, what people don't know is like when you really love to do something you don't even realize how much time has gone by because like for me i started in high school too and there was a man even when i was in high school you know and that was years before you were there mm -hmm. everybody was rapping there were, but it was all like rap groups you know like everyone had their own crew everyone was rapping everyone was putting out music but it was like once high school ended a lot of those people just gave up because i don't know if they looked at it like what most people did you know like oh you know like I didn't get nowhere with it or i don't know what to do from here because everyone thought oh i'm gonna put out a mixtape and i'm gonna blow up yeah they expected and that didn't happen it it took it takes a lot of work every day yeah. and you literally have to invest in yourself especially these days mm -hmm. if you really think i'm gonna just put out a song or i'm gonna put out a a mixtape or an album and it's gonna blow up that's not gonna happen because you need to have you need to put money behind your product and invest in yourself in, in every way to really get out there so you know i say that to say 
as an artist, how have you invested in yourself? I've, I was able to, I've been able to make my own website. I've been able to have my own shirts. Um, so you got the website and the merch. The merch. I have the um, paying for promotion, dog. You know, that's that's very, very important. Um, yeah, because you need to be able to reach the people that yeah. don't know about you, you yeah, know? Yeah. And buying equipment, you know. That's another like, one. And studio time, that's investment Another right one. You know, a lot of people want to keep recording and making music, but at one point, you got to say, like, okay, well, I don't have the best equipment. I got to pay somebody, you know. I got to step it up and go to a studio where they have, you know, a badass mic or, yep. you know, an engineer. You know, if we don't have, if, if, you, if you don't know how to engineer your own shit, you got to pay somebody to, you know, you know to clean it up and and you know polish that shit up good yeah because you want that final like product to sound good you know yeah. even if you record at home you could still go to the studio and have them mix and master it for you to where it'll sound like you didn't even record at home yeah. so when you put that song out you know and people hear it they're actually going to want to keep hearing it because you know i learned that it's cool to record at home but it's i don't think it's a good idea to put out your own mixed version you know because yeah. You, you're hearing that song so much, you're not really gonna realize what you need to work on to make it sound better. But if you take it to another engineer at doing. a studio, yeah. they're gonna hear what you did and they're gonna know where to take it from there. Like me, I've been like really impressed going to different studios, but the one that yeah. I really like to go to is Audible Studios with Speedy G. Because every song that I've taken to him, since we did Conmigo, he took a song that was like okay sounding, but he made that shit sound so good to where, you know, like all together, we're like past a million streams, you know, like on all streaming platforms. So he congrats took, to that dog. Congrats yeah, to that you song know, appreciate too. it. So he took a song that I had mixed myself, but I kept saying like, nah, this has to be done somewhere else, you know, like, cause they're going to hear something that I'm not hearing, you know? And so I just say, you know, it's important to not always just try to do it yourself. You know, like it's okay yeah. to have the version that you want to play for everybody. But when you're going to actually put it out, I would say to go to a studio and have them do it, you know, like to make it sound better. Yeah, I mean, you want to make it be the best it can be, you know what I mean? <clears throat> uh, loud, loud wise or whatever. And and that's where, you know, that's that's the part that that's like, man, a lot of people don't recognize engineers, you know, the shit that they do um, in the music is like not really recognized, you know, yep. which sucks. So, man, yeah, engineers are very important. So that's an investment right there. You got to yep, pay, that, really, yeah. you know. And if you come across somebody that's worth some kind of money, like, you know, has, you know, uh, good quality sound and it has like a, like, you know, a couple projects already attached to him, well, you're going to have to pay for good quality, yep. you know, and it's you like anything else, that. you know what I'm saying? And see me, I don't mind paying for it. I'm, yeah, I'm quick yeah. to be like, hey, I want this person to work on my song because I already heard what they did to my last song, you know, like, all right, let's just use Speedy G as an example. Mm -hmm. I always go to him because ever since he did that, he fixed it conmigo up to make it sound the way it sounded. I just remember telling my brother JP, like, man, I'm just gonna stick with him because it don't matter what song I take to him, he'll he'll add to it to where it just sounds so fucking good to where I'm like, man, like it's like each song that I do is like better than the last one because he's yeah. taking my idea, adding his idea. And that's why like I'm not saying everyone has to do it, but I would suggest, you know, give your engineer a percentage of that song. You know, like even if it's a small percentage, he'll still be thankful to where every time you go back, he's gonna wanna work on your music because not only is he getting paid to do what he likes to do, but he's also going to get the long-term money, especially if that song blows up, you know? Yeah, yeah. So that's what I do. Sometimes as artists, we're like, you know, I won't say we're always serious, but a lot of times, you know, we're so focused on the music to where we spend a lot of time being serious. But do you have any funny moments or memories like while working on music or at a studio, you know, like just something happening, any any little funny moments that you would like to share? So remember whenever you, you were there with me, you and Dren, uh, whenever I had it, uh, I went to go record uh, through the city at Barron. Yeah. Well, the engineer, uh, Davis, Davis was uh, was my engineer, and, and, and I'm still, you know, cool at homeboy. You know, he, he was trying to make me, he was trying to make the sound the best possible. And um, I kind of tried to do melody on the hook. And of I, course, I I'm, not a, I'm, not a, I'm not no singer, dog, you know? But he wanted, like I said, he wanted to make the song, you know. Yeah, to add to it. Exactly, you know, and make it sound better. So he, he wanted me to do, like, sing a part, dog. You know what I mean? Like, sing background vocals. Like, yeah. man, hell no. Like, I don't want to do that. Like, I don't, I'm not I'm not trying to sing. I'm, it was just like a melody type shit, you know. And he's like, man, well, just try it. How you, you know, just try it. Let's just give it a shot. I'm like, 
And y'all, y'all fools were back there, you know, in the control room. And I'm like, all right, man, but y'all fuckers better not laugh. <laughs> I was about to say that. I remember you saying, like, through, through the through the mic, because they had it to where we could hear. Yeah. You're like, yeah. man, I'm going to try this. Y'all fuckers better not laugh. And we're over there laughing, like, all right, we're not going <laughs> to yeah. laugh. Man, and y'all probably did, what, like, probably two takes. Little fucking singing choir voice shit, you know, and... I was like, man, dog, I was like mad. I wasn't mad, but I was like, man, I really don't, like, I'm not a singer, dog, you know, I don't want to sing. But we, we, he kept it in, like, in the background vocal type thing, you know. But, yeah, dog, that, that was, I guess, one of the more, like, a funny moment. Because I ain't no damn singer, but he wanted me to hit a certain note where, like, I don't, like. He had you singing, like, Usher. Yeah, yeah, dog, you know, some shit like that. And I was like, man, damn, but fuck it, you know. It's part of the job, dog. You had to do it. Yep. You had to try it out, man. Hey, earlier you had brought up like about being an MC and really liking, you know, like to that part of the music. What would you say is your favorite classic album, like from an MC? Fuck. That's 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 a really tough question, man. Man. Like, what's that one album that, that just at the top of your head? It don't have to actually be your favorite, cause I'm like I know you're like me. Every day you go from you know. Oh, this is the shit. This is the the one, you know, old school rapper that I'm really fucking with. And then the next day you might go back to listen to someone else. Like, oh no, this is the this is my favorite one. Man, there's a lot. I guess just to pick one right now, I'll, I'll probably go with I'll go with Capital Punishment. Oh, big fun. I'll go with Capital Punishment. Um the the good thing about back then is it was in abundance, dog. Like, you know, back then most rappers were MCs, you know, they weren't yep. just rapping whatever, whatever. You know, they were really they were really pushing that pen, you know, so that's why you have the 90s full of classic albums, you know what I mean? Because everybody was really trying to do their thing and be the best at it and not trying to sound at like anybody else. And Big Pun, because of the type of flow he had and the fact that he was, you know, he was like a, he was a Latino, he was a Hispanic uh, dude trying to do it in rap. And man, everybody really just welcome Pun in the album like you know like really off the back you know because of how good the album was you know and, and the different kind of songs that he had in there but man if you really sit there like I, i've had to sit there and like kind of read the lyrics though because his flow will be so fast too at certain points yeah. where like i want to catch every word the, the way he would like mix the words in like he didn't have no spaces mm-hmm. he'll put five words like back to back you know like uh, and they wouldn't be no you know like small words they'd be like vocabulary Hell words yeah. you know like yeah, that's what my what caught my attention about that too so would you also say that big pun is like your favorite rapper right now hell yeah hell uh, yeah uh, i've been I, thinking about that lately probably because pun uh his passing the anniversary just you know yeah. just happened and uh i've been watching uh his documentaries all over again and different videos and interviews and i've been i've been on a big pun trip for yep. I think for like a week, two weeks now, you know. <laughs> oh shit! Hey. So I think that's why I want to say that right now. Me dog. too. But man, the thing like, that, that, I never stop playing like big puns music. Like I have days where I'm like, oh yeah, yeah that's yeah. all I play. And then I have days where I just go through my playlist. But he always has music on the playlist yeah, yeah. that just gets me. Like you know, um, what what would you say is your favorite song off the Capital Punishment album? Do you have a favorite Probably. song that like you go to and then you go back and play the yeah. rest of the album? Capital Punishment, the actual song, the the, the song title. Capital punishment, dog. Every time I hear that beat drop, those them keys and and those strings, and just hear Pun go at it, you know, that that's that's one of the, my favorite songs. I don't I don't know if that's my favorite song, but I know for a fact that every single time that that song gets me, dog. I gotta turn that shit up. Yeah, like me, every time I play Capital Punishment. I know it might be weird, but like I go to the song Glamour Life, I'll go there first, and then I start the whole album over and let it play from beginning, yeah, you know, to the end. Because that's what I do with Capital Punishment, that and uh, Dream Shatter. Yeah, oh shit. Dog, that right there makes but me see, like, pick up I, a pen and a pad and, you know, get to writing. I always like the song Glamour Life because I like the way the beat sounded, but I also like how he had everybody on that song, you know, like they all just fucking kill that, you know, like everyone had their badass little verse on there, you know, and it's just like, I like, I always liked hearing those type of music, those type of songs where, you know, like back then the artist would always have their crew on at least one song where all of them are on it, you know, like that shit was badass to me, you know, like, so when I hear that song, I like to play that song, you know, and it gets me like, you know, wanting to do something. Yeah. And then I go back, you know, once it's over, sometimes I might play it two or three times, then I go back, all right, let me start the whole album again, yeah. you know? Well, that's what Capital Punishment does to me, right? Like like I said, I guess, I, I guess you know, you could say that's my favorite song from the album, Capital Punishment. 
it's just like it's dark it's it's, it's weird and honestly every time i hear that song i feel like you know it just if you close your eyes and you're jamming out like it's, it has that new york feel to where it makes yeah. you feel like you know you're out there in new york you know and i don't know i just love i love everything about it you know and then just he goes in on that shit, you know hell yeah do, do you feel like i don't know if it's just me but sometimes i feel like He's not mentioned enough whenever they mention like you know all the great artists from the 90s and 2000s because you know if you think about it he really popped like right before 2000 you know like 98 i think that one came out in 98 yeah like he really got like up there to where people were like really like everybody knew about him i would say around 99 you know like he really like was up there you know yeah but um i just feel like he's not mentioned enough you know like his music like to me like I've had many discussions, especially on social media, where I say lyrically, Big Pun was better than everybody out there. And like, don't get me wrong, I fuck with Biggie, Tupac, Big L, like you, you name them. You know, like all the artists that were out there, Scarface, everybody. I felt like they all had their own piece of music that just, you know, like I love the shit that they put out. Mm-hmm. But I feel like lyrically and as an MC, I just felt like no one could touch Big Pun. And if you play his music right now against anybody from his time, even if you put him against the artist just from the years that he dropped i feel like he over overpowers everybody lyrically you know and i just feel like man he don't get enough and i also feel like he don't get enough spotlight because the way he passed away i feel like you know it it sucks to say but it's like in rap hip-hop music if you don't die by the gun they don't glorify you yeah which is it's a trip dog it's a trip because they do the same thing with easy e yeah, same thing. Same thing they easy. don't really, you know, bring them up like that. And come on, dog, like they, you know, he is the Godfather against the rap. You know, Easy E. There's no, there's no Dr. Dre without Easy E. Yep. I mean, I guess vice versa too. But you know, um, Dr. Dre gets glorified a hell of a lot more than Easy E. But you know, Easy E is like the foundation. You know what I'm saying? And man, Big Pond, dog. And it sucks because there's so much extra stuff that I think even prevents from from Big Pond being big in this time. So much extra outside of music, you yeah. know? Um, and I think that it just sucks, dog, you know, for real. Because to me, honestly, um, if you're having a conversation about top five or top 10 or the best lyricist of all, of all time and Big Pond is not brought up in that conversation, man, you shouldn't even be having that yep. conversation for shit. Yeah, straight up, I say you know? the same thing. As a producer, do you have a specific instrument, like your go-to instrument or like, you know, drum drum kits, you know, like do you have a specific sound that every time you start making beats, is there like a specific sound you go to first? Um, I wanna say uh, piano, either piano or guitar, like a, um, like a Spanish guitar or, or, you know, just any kind of guitar or like a rock guitar, electric guitar. For a long time, it was choirs because yeah. choirs would like make everything sound kind of crunk and yep. you know, shit like that um yeah man it's just really for for um and i think that's why a lot of my beats have like keys on it you know it's not just like like synths and stuff like that a lot of my a lot of the stuff i produce has a lot of like uh strings and and keys whether it be roads or pianos and stuff like that you know um bells it's just i don't know something about about the the keys that i just really like you know what i mean making trying to come up with chords and learning chords and you know melodies with the keys but yeah i think i think that would be my go-to you know sometimes i I switch the sounds i'll probably start off with piano but i like the way it sounds better with a violin yeah you know so i'll change it up but i I think most of the time i come up with with stuff playing the piano you know and see how it sounds but I think that would be my go-to uh, instrument, a piano or guitar. Before the name B Music was created, do you remember what your first rap name was? Yeah. Or was it always B Music? Nah, I had BC for a while. And I don't know, it was like kind of plain. And I didn't like, I don't know, I didn't like much of it. And it was just like B, like, you know, people call me Bone. So it was just having that letter B and then C for my last name, which is Catalan. And I don't know, I just, I remember asking a few people, like I asked my cousin, hey, what do you think? And B Music was just supposed to be for production, like a, like a signature for production. Okay. You know, like a tag. And um, that's really what that was supposed to be about. And then I kept thinking and asking around, like, man, I don't know something about it. I just, I'm not really feeling it. And I would ask a few people, like I said, I asked my cousin, like, hey, what you think? Uh, What should I go with? B Music or BC? Or or what you think about the names? He's like, 
Nah, be music. I think be music you should use use that for both production and you know for rapping thing. Yeah, I mean it like, does right. it does stand out better than BC. But I remember yeah, when you went by on. BC because we had a couple songs out that you had your name BC. I even think on my album, right? It yeah, was yeah, BC. yeah. That was that's before B Music. Yeah. yeah, from nothing, I think it shows that's BC, and yeah. that's because I didn't want to use Bone because there's already Bone Thugs, Bone Thugs and Harmony. Yeah. You know what I mean, and um, so I just wanted to come up with something that was unique to me. You know, I didn't want to be like, oh, Bone, why? Like, I don't know. I just didn't want to be confused or compared to anything else that was out there. You know? Yeah. And I was just trying to think of names and think of names, and I couldn't come up with anything. Plus, with BC, at the end, you know. Uh, I started thinking about it and just uh, the, like something cool about the name was that it still has the, both B and the C. Of course, it has the B and at the end of music, there's a C. So it's still in there. You know what I mean? So B music. I know we're only two months into the year, but do you have like a goal that you set for yourself like that you want to you want to reach this year? Um, I think I just want to be able to get more listeners, make my... Uh, my followers, my make the following grow, you know. Uh, put out music as much as I can. I'm looking to, I'm trying to finish up the the, the new album that I'm working on. I'm trying to finish finish that up, and then after that, I'm a, I'm gonna follow it up with uh, another another instrumental beat. I mean, another instrumental tape, um, which will be in the stash part volume two. Uh, in the stash part. Volume one is out right now on all streaming sites. You know, if y'all, you know, check that shit out. Um, and it's just basically a collection of beats that I've been having just sitting there for a long time, you know, or stuff that I didn't write to and things that, you know, I didn't end up using. So it really is the stuff that I have in the stash, you know what I mean? And then um, instead of just sitting there, I just let, you know, why not put them out, you know, and, and get some kind of following, you know? I mean, that that is better than, you know, just having to sit there. You know, I learned that shit the hard way because I used to, like, make so many beats a day. And then at the end of the year, I would have, like, man, I can't even give a number. But I'd have so many beats on my computer. And what I would do is at the end of every year, any beats that I didn't use for myself or other artists that I had around didn't end up using, I would just delete them. Yeah. And then when I got to the point, like, you know, I, at first I was work, I was distributing my music through CD Baby. So they charge you every time you put something out. Mm-hmm. When Distro Kid came to my attention and it's I seen one time fee. Yeah, one time, one time fee, you know, and you put out however much music you want to put out for the yep. year. I was like, man, fuck it. Let me try it out. And instead of deleting beats, I started just uploading beats on there, you know, and in one year I had put out like 50 beats. So, you know, each beat started generating. I was putting out so much music to where. I started getting like crazy amount of fans, you know, all throughout the U.S. and overseas, like in different places, you know, like places I couldn't even pronounce. I still can't pronounce some of those places. Yeah. But instead of having that music go to waste, you know, just by deleting them. It's I generating started, you some kind of money. Yeah, too, you know, you know, while I'm asleep, it's generating money. When exactly. I wake up, it's generating money. Throughout the day, it's generating money just by people playing it. And I learned like... Even though a beat might not be what you want to use, you never know what someone might want to hear. They might love the shit out of a beat that you really didn't like. Yep. So instead of deleting, you know, like it's a good idea just to start putting beats out instead of just deleting them, you know. And I even got to the point where I don't even care to produce for nobody no more because I feel like I could do more by releasing the beat myself and I could make more by releasing it myself, you know. Yeah, yeah. And that was my thinking too, you know, right now with um, <clears throat> and everyone having like a, like their own thing going on you know their own, their own platform a lot of it requires music or they put music in the background you know and and i just figured man well maybe somebody will want to use one of my beats for their for their podcast or use yeah. it for whatever reason you know what i mean so yeah you know why not put it out there like you said somebody out there might like it and you know you do something with it that i didn't even think about you know you just never know dog you know yeah that's how that's how it works you know like there's just so many people listening to music right now. I think they said there's like 5,000 songs a day that gets released. Yeah, I heard something about that. You know, it's, um, it's like a crazy number every day. That amount of, you know, just imagine if it is 5,000. 5,000 songs come out a day. Yeah. So that means people are really listening to music if that much music is being put out. So you never know, you know, your song could be on repeat daily, you know, and it might be a beat or a song that you were just like, man, fuck it, I don't want it to go to waste. I'm going to just mm-hmm. put it out. Next thing you know, you know, you're making money and you got somebody you got a new fan you know yeah, yeah because I, I know i know that um a lot of times you listen to your own beats and and you're like man you kind of get 
it gets old, you know. Yeah, because you hear but it that'll so much. Mean, yeah, that don't mean that it might not be, you know, it's still tight. You know, you just got tired of hearing it over yep. and over, you know. So I don't know. I just uh, and plus they be sitting there like like the first uh, in the stash pile volume one man. Those beats been there for like a long long time man for months and I just never did nothing with them. And just from me trying to learn the whole streaming thing and you know stuff like that from different interviews that I've watched from several people, they just the best thing you could do. I'm like man, just put that out. You know, put everything out there. You know, you just never know what what could come out of it. And at worst. It's just it's still out there, you know. At best, it's, it's generating something for you, you know. It's doing something for you, so yep. you know, rather than just sitting there in the computer and not making any kind of you know like money for you or any kind of recognition, you know, man, put that out there. Yeah. You know? What would you say is your greatest accomplishment from last year? I was able to land an interview with with uh, on a, on a platform that was based out in L.A. And uh, I don't I didn't have no kind of connection to this, to the, to the platform, or I didn't know, like, I didn't know nothing about them. I had never even heard of the platform, you know. Well, what I mean? What's the name of the platform? Uh, what's poppin' LA? Shout out to them. Um, what's poppin' LA? They, they had, they had uh, came across my music somehow, and um, they reached out to me, you know. And they said if uh, if I wanted, I was interested in doing an interview with them, and I was like, man, yeah, of course, you know. And um, I tripped out when they when I seen that they were out there in LA. So I think that I think that's been uh, that's been like a good accomplishment this year so far because that means that uh, somebody out there is listening, you know. Yep. So um, I don't know exactly what song they came across or even a beat probably, you know, that they came across or something, you know. But they reached out to me and this is uh, I've had a few interviews here in Houston, but you know, it's from from people that knows people you know yeah you know but with, on that platform i didn't i didn't know them you know i had never heard of them and uh i landed i have i landed an interview with them so i think that was pretty cool you know what i mean so yeah man i think i think based on that i started thinking also about i want to i want to have a show outside of texas if not outside of houston um but outside of Texas, you know. Yeah, what I mean? hey, I that, would, that's a goal a right there. You know, like that's something to <laughs> set for yourself and make it happen. Cause it will happen if you, you know, set that goal for yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's I think one of my next steps is I wanna I wanna try to perform outside of outside of Houston, man. Outside of Texas, you know what I mean. And uh, yeah, man, that's that's what we're working for this year too. Hopefully, it'll happen. So where can everyone find you? Um, I try to stay active on, on all social social media uh, platforms, but everything is, is in my, my website, www.bmusicentertainment.net. Everything is on there. You know, you can pick you can pick your your the platform that you use the most, whether it be, you know, Facebook, Instagram or you know, TikTok, YouTube, all that. You know, I'm on all that. So, you know, the, the one stop shop is that website, you know, www.bmusicentertainment.net, man. Fuck with your boy. You got any last last things you want to say to everybody? Shout out to everybody that's that's watching, that's showing love, that's that's been showing love to me for for a long time, man. You know what I mean? Thank you. And uh we appreciate you. We appreciate you and um be on the lookout the album 225 coming soon bitch definitely definitely we'll be killing that we'll be dropping in you'll hear it here too maybe we could do some kind of like uh live you know music day where we play your album you know and let everybody yeah. hear it maybe maybe we'll go live with y'all and y'all could check it out oh no we'll make it happen that's what this is for yeah yeah this is family right here you know and i didn't do all this work just to have it sitting here looking pretty you know like <laughs> This shit, we're put into use. Hell yeah, man, man. Thank you, dog. Thank you for having me. And like I said, man, much oh, this, success. This is just the first time of many. You know, we got a lot of yeah. plans. You know, we're just, y'all going to be seeing a lot of us soon. Yeah, nah, not even soon. You're going to just start seeing us everywhere, like now. Yep. So Starting man, this week, y'all, y'all are going to see everything. <laughs> All right, so y'all heard it here first on the Musical Architects Podcast. Let's get money. Peace. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, my check one, two. Yeah, yeah, my check one, two. Yeah, yeah, my check one, two. I just wrote a big blunt, be music come through. Driving in a circle, I got the purple. Got the line for the sun and the moonlight. Feeling alright, yeah, I'm alright. In the days, you can catch me on the highway. Driving in a circle, I got the purple. Got the 
salam for the sun and the moonlight Feeling alright, yeah I'm alright In the days you can catch me on a high